Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making some lip balms. So it's going to be a make lip balms, chat with me, and while I'm making it, give you guys some tips on getting started on making your own lip balms at home. So let's get started. Today I'm going to be making two flavors of lip balm. One of them is going to be my Forest Berry Zest lip balm and the other one is going to be my Misty Pine Latte lip balm. The Forest Berry Zest is a mix of some raspberry and lemon. It's a very refreshing lip balm. And the Misty Pine Latte is a coffee flavor that has some vanilla in there. Making lip balms is very quick for me. It's also very easy. I basically just combine all these ingredients, melt them down, pour them into the tubes with this lip balm pouring tray that I got years ago, like a really long time ago, but it's a Crafter's Choice branded silicone lip balm tray. It moves around a lot. And I highly recommend if you're going to be making lip balms to use a tray like this so that your lip balm tubes can stay upright and you can pour into them quite easily. For those of you diving into the world of lip balms, they're pretty simple to formulate. A good starter recipe is 30% beeswax, 30% of a liquid oil, and 30% of a butter. And those three together will make a pretty decent lip balm. And once you make your first lip balm, then you can go from there changing the different amounts to get to the texture that you're looking for. But you could also add different ingredients to enhance the overall texture, the longevity, how it feels on the lips. The sky's the limit when it comes to lip balms. My lip balm uses candelilla wax. Mostly because when I first started, I was marketing myself as a vegan company. I don't think I do that anymore. Although I don't use any ingredients that are derived from animals in my products, I can't guarantee if they're 100% vegan, so I don't feel confident in calling myself a vegan company, if you know what I mean. Like I don't know if the methods in attaining those materials are necessarily vegan, so I try to avoid that kind of verbiage when I'm talking about my products. I have made lip balms with beeswax before and beeswax is really good for lip balms. What I'm adding here is a little bit of settle alcohol and this adds stiffness to the lip balm. The more you get into skincare and the more you find out what each ingredient does to an overall product, the more comfortable you'll get in substituting certain ingredients for other ingredients. Now I'm going to use some Kapuasu butter. And I used to use cocoa butter, which is also a great butter to use in lip balms because it's really stiff and helps with preventing the lip balm from melting in really hot, super hot temperatures. It helps keep that lip balm stable. But I switched to Kapuasu because I wanted a slightly softer butter. Kapuasu actually does a slightly better job of hydrating lips than cocoa butter. Cocoa butter actually has a higher amount of stearic acid in it, whereas Kapuasu butter has higher oleic in it. This helps it absorb easily into the skin and also helps hydrate the skin. Cocoa butter does that too, but they do so at different levels and honestly the difference might be very, very minuscule. But I found once I switched to Kapuasu butter, the texture of my lip balms improved. It's only slightly softer than cocoa butter. It's still pretty brittle, still pretty hard but I've been loving it in my lip balms. Interestingly, I don't see Kapuasu used very often in lip balms. It's nice to experiment and try different things out. That being said, I'm still adding some cocoa butter to the lip balms. I've just changed the amount of it from my previous recipes using slightly less cocoa butter because I do like the hardness that cocoa butter gives my lip balms. I'm also adding a little bit of coconut oil to my recipe. I'm gonna add some castor oil. Castor oil is used a lot in lipstick because it helps that lipstick keep from drying your lips out. It's a great oil. It's nice and thick. And last but not least, I'm using hemp seed oil. It's the star of this lip balm, in my opinion. really love hemp seed oil. It absorbs into skin really fast. It's a really light oil, but it has so many nutrients in it. It has a lot of different fatty acids in it. Oh, I love hemp seed oil for skincare because it absorbs right into the skin. It's pretty light, but it packs a huge punch when it comes to hydration. So that's pretty much my whole lip balm base right there. When it comes to the rest of the ingredients, I'm gonna to switch to my jewelry scale so I can measure out the really, really small amounts. We'll melt this down, and then I'll come back once we're at that stage.
our lip balm bases have completely melted. Oh, got a little steamy there. Now I just have to add the flavor oils, a little bit of vitamin E, and an oil soluble extract. Ooh, it smells so good. I'm gonna do the raspberry lemon flavor first. Put my additives in, and then I'm gonna stir for two minutes so that the flavor oils and everything distribute perfectly and evenly in the wax and the other butters and oils. All right, everything is mixed together. All I have to do is pour it into the lip balm tubes. And I'm going this low for the thumbnail, if I'm being completely honest. But it's actually working out okay. I don't mind that I'm overfilling because then I'll just scrape that off and clean it up later on. I'm gonna go the rest of the way up here. I think I got my shot for my thumbnail. It's another tip too if you guys want to start YouTube is the thumbnail and title are probably the two most important things. More important than the actual content that you make because no matter how good your content is, if you don't got the right title and thumbnail, people are not going to click on it. It's not going to be seen. Like your content could be literal garbage, but YouTube will still promote it if the title and thumbnail gets those clicks. So my lip balms have poured. What I need to do now is get them to solidify and I like to have them solidify in the refrigerator because it cools them down really quick. And then I'll finish them off tomorrow. And by finish them off, I mean, smooth the tops and clean them up a little bit and then add a label. So you'll see me label these guys and my sugar scrubs tomorrow. And today is date night. Kayla and I are going to try a restaurant that we've been to before, but when we visited it last time, we came super late. So a lot of the stuff on the menu wasn't there anymore. We were like the last customers to come in. So we're gonna give it another try and hopefully there'll be more things on the menu, but I would love to take you along with us so you can see what we order. But this concludes the making studio part of the vlog. And if you're not interested in that, then you can click off. But if this is all you're interested in, you can buy these lip balms on my website. There is a link down below. And you can also make these yourselves through a recipe that I provide on my Patreon, which is also linked down below. And speaking of my Patreon, thank you to my patrons, especially my Bubble BFFs, their names are right over here. You guys are awesome. Every single person who supports me on Patreon, I appreciate you so much, but I also appreciate the people who watch my videos, comments and likes, and take the time to just make my day feel extra good by just supporting me. Thank you guys. But that is it, and then until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. <gasps> Kale did it! Oh, and you can change the colors too! Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, wow. Oh. Uh, Which one did you do you like? I feel like red's intense. It started on red, so that's just kind of the default in my mind. But can, it, can it change colors like on its own, like intermittently? You know what I mean? Like, just kind of. Remember the LED lights we had? Yeah, I know like the strings of lights can do that. I don't think there's a setting for that, or if it does, I haven't kept it on for long enough. I'm pretty sure the uh, electric fireplace that was there didn't have that, the setting. I like that color. Yeah, I like... I kind of like oh, blue. Oh, wait, okay. There's two reds, so... Oh, is, is there like a softer red? Like one of the reds, one that changes. This is the first red. Okay. I like green. Green's good. Blue's good, too. I like that blue. Yeah, maybe... Does this one change? I don't know. But thank you, this is know. awesome. You're welcome. I need to move this bracket higher up because <laughs> there's this yeah. space of wall that is exposed. Maybe put the bracket like right on the edge there. Looks like yeah, the top, yeah. I'll move it up. Just the previous fireplace was held by down here. Yeah. So it needed kind of more room up here. This one is held by the top. So. Well, this looks amazing. Thank you. Yep. And uh, shout out to my dad for <laughs> creating the brackets or modifying some brackets from some really old shelves that he had to hold this one up. Wow. Thank yeah. you, Papa.
Thank you. <laughs> Are you impressed, Gibson? <laughs> Hi. At night, Kill and I like to do yoga before dinner, and this is what happens. <laughs> we get two dogs that just want to join in. <laughs> oh, you guys are so cute. So we have finished our yoga session and I hope you guys enjoyed that little bit of sped up footage. But yeah, since Kayla and I have been doing that, we have been feeling so much nicer. And we are going to feed the dogs and our cat and then head out to date night. We we're going to have Mexican food. And I didn't mean to wear this sweater, but it says give me tacos. Now, what an appropriate sweater for our uh, date night at the Mexican restaurant. But we will show you what we eat, so come along with us.